Hello, welcome to the TV and Film Review Podcast, episode 4. I'm your host, Stuart Scott, triumphant return for this week. Thanks very much to David for last week for uh, filling in as host. Uh, this week joining us, we've got another triumphant return, uh, Liam Kearney, our news editor. Hello, hello. We've got, returning from last week, Molly Freeman. Hi. And making her podcast debut, our film writer, Kate McCall. Hi, everyone. No trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> no trumpets, I'm afraid. Sorry. Damn. <laughs> Should we say where David is today as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, David won't be joining us today uh, because he is off getting married this weekend. Was it yesterday or today? I, I think, think it's today. I think it's, I think today, it's yeah. today as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, congratulations to him and wish him well on his honeymoon. Indeed. So I don't know if you guys want to start off with what we've been watching this week. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, okay. let's go for it. <laughs> okay, so Kate, you're off eager. Why don't you start? Um, well, I haven't been watching a great deal, um, but I did want to bring up a couple of things that I have been watching. Well, I've been catching up on, actually, this week. Um, and, they're, and they're kind of British-centric, but um, I'll go for it anyway. Um, one of them is a kind of dark comedy that's just started uh, a couple of weeks ago on BBC Two called Inside Number Nine. Have any of you um, been watching this? I've seen it advertised. Mm. I didn't watch it. What's it about? It's um, it's from uh, two of the League of Gentlemen. It's from Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith, and um, it's it's kind of they're kind of one-off plays really, but they're very dark comedies in the vein of League of Gentlemen and Psychoville. So the first two have just been on, and um, they're all they're all on the iPlayer on on Series Link if you want to catch up. But I just. It, it, and it's also it kind of brings to mind um, Black Mirror as well. If if any of you guys watched oh, yeah, any of no, that, the Charlie Brooker yeah. show, so, yeah. So it's that kind of. I mean, I think Black Mirror is a little bit more focused on the drama side of things. Um, Inside Number Nine is very much the dark comedy, but it is like dark, dark comedy. Um, yeah. But it's 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 very funny as well. I think if you like the League of Gentlemen and that kind of that humour. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. So, like I said, I've just watched. They're only half an hour up, so I just watched the first two. I think on Friday, Saturday, I caught up with them, and it's it's really worth watching. So, I just wanted to put a bit of a shout out to that as well to get people watching it because it is very good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and the other thing I've been catching up on, um, which I think you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, Stu, is um, Jamae Private School Girl. Ah. Oh. Thank God someone else is watching it because that's a total idea. <laughs> I know, I was, I was listening to the podcast and there was just like, yeah, tumbleweed when you mentioned Summer Heights <laughs> High and the Angry Boys. And I was like, oh, it's such good TV. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, Jamae Private School Girl is the fourth show from Chris Lilly, um, the Australian comic who did Summer Heights High and Angry Boys and We Can Be Heroes. And it's the, fir- and it's the third time he's played Jamae. I think she, she was in We Can Be Heroes, vying for Australian of the Year. Yeah. Um, but I think most notably she was in Summer Heights High. And um, so I've watched the first... So it's on BBC Three at the moment. I know it's been on in Australia. I think it's been on, on HBO as well. Uh, it's been on HBO yeah, and BBC in America, apparently. Oh, right, OK. I know HBO took Angry Boys and Summer Heights High. So, yeah. But it's... it's. I still think that Summer Heights High is his peak. I still think that's the best thing he's done. Because those three see, characters were just... See, I thought I thought Angry Boys was the best. That was, that was my favourite. Mm, I think Angry Boys was a slow one. I mean, don't get me wrong, the last episode of Angry Boys made me cry so much. It, it, just a cu- accumulation of all the storylines coming together. It was just just a perfect ending. And, yeah, and absolutely. It really brought the series together. But I think Summer Heights High is, is more rewatchable. And I can just watch... Episodes and episodes of Summer Heights High. I can quote. We we do quote it in my house all the time. So, um, so it's great to see him doing Jamae again, and it it's very you know it's proper like. It's tough. Cause, to watch, well, I, I well I mean really and, but I think yeah. Well, I went to a girl. I I went to a girls' grammar school when I grew up, so I know the kind of and I was a prefect, so I know all of that <laughs> kind of environment. And it's 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 obviously exaggerated, but it does get a lot of the things. Uh, oh, wow, pretty really? spot on, <laughs> but obviously, her, and she just loves to dance, doesn't she? And all her dance, is, all so, her dance moments. So <laughs> I know you just like. <laughs> yeah. I know, and her relationship with the headmaster is just. Where is that going? I don't want to know. Aye, it's good. Are you? Are you? Um, are you ahead of me? Or are you at the same same stage? Um, where are we here? Um, episode? So episode three will be out 
this Thursday. Right, I've I've just finished episode three not too long ago. Oh, okay. So you so you want ahead. So at the moment, it, it's building up to this party she's having. So is the party episode three? Yes, it's, it's yeah. really okay. funny as well. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Um, well, I just want—I know it's been mentioned a few times before, but I just wanted to just keep pushing. True Detective is one of the best things on TV right now. Everybody should be watching it. I, I just think it's—it's—it's it's, it's just really well done. It's so kind of atmospheric, and you know, being a bit of a nerd, I love all the Lovecraftian references as well. <laughs> um, and and Matthew McConaughey is. is you know the the turnaround he has had to get to where he is now. Uh, Woody Harrelson is good. It's actually quite interesting because I think on paper, I would you know you've got the guy, you've got the Family Guy who's kind of more relaxed, and then you've got the kind of the weird cop who's got this such a a a, a weird philosophy on life, such a dark philosophy. And and on paper, I would say oh you know, the roles would be reversed. I would have thought Woody Harrelson would be playing the more weird one and Matthew McConaughey would be playing the more family guy, all-round American guy. But they've swapped the roles around, which I think is really interesting and has really paid off, actually. Yeah, it works really well. Uh, I just started watching it this week as well. Um, And I... I couldn't wait for the the fourth episode. I I had uh, had three lined up and then I was was just bursting to see the fourth. It's very... The, one, the comparison I keep making is Mad Men, because there's not a lot that happens in it, but it's just you're so so hooked to it. I must be missing something. I didn't I didn't like it. The f- I've only seen the first episodes, but I just, maybe it's because it's like Mad Men and it's too slow and I don't like. It's yeah. The, the first the first couple of episodes are really slow. Episode four is it just totally changes pace. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. It, it, is that a biker gang or something they're they're going to? Yeah. I, I mean, I I would say actually for me. It, it kind of had that feel of quality drama about it, and I wanted to give it a go. I, I know what you're saying, Liam. The first episode was a little bit slow, yeah. but I think the this, the the ending, the closing shot of episode three, which I'm not going to give anything away, um, in case people haven't watched it, it's just like, oh my god, you just want to get to episode four, oh, and then yeah. episode four, <laughs> the um, the last six minutes is just like one tracking shot, and it's just so cinematic. And it's just, it's just amazing television. It's just one of the best things out there at the moment. Yeah, it's so well And done it's HBO, and... obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but all... I think you did it well, Stu. I think, okay. um, I think um, having you know stored a few up and watching them all in a go rather than week by week is, is maybe a good way to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm etching for the next one already. I think it's tonight it yeah. is over in the States. So. Yeah, it's tonight. Yes. Uh, yeah. Have you been uh, watching it at all, Molly? No, I I'm really not into drama series like that. Uh, one of my friends loves it. She watches it. And she keeps telling me I shouldn't watch it because she knows I won't like it. So I might wait until the whole season is over and then just watch it all in one go, or at least try to. It's if you can get past the first two episodes and still be wanting to watch, it, still have a desire to watch it. It's it's really good. You'll like it. Um, but the first two episodes, it kind of sets the tone, and yeah, if you if you struggle with them, maybe maybe give it a miss. Yeah, because I um, I had problems watching Mad Men. I watched the pilot of Mad Men, and I couldn't get past it because I was just so bored. Yeah, it's, it's that same sort of sort of pace into it. It's quite slow and tries to go a bit more in depth with everything than it needs to be. But I, I like that sort of thing. I really like Mad Men and all that as well. One of you guys want to go next, or? Uh, well, this weekend I have been watching House of Cards. I don't know if anyone else has been watching season it. Season two? Um, season two, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I've been watching that. This Obviously, it came out on Friday on Netflix, um, and I've still got two to go. I was planning on totally binge-watching it, but I seem to have managed to not plow through it as quickly as I thought we'd. So I've still got two to go, and it's just been amazing. The first episode, I obviously don't want to give any spoilers for people, but the first episode, there's such a big twist that happens about three quarters of the way through, which I just did not see come in, and I've seen a lot of like people on, on the internet as well kind of saying, oh my you know, oh my days, can't believe that happened. Um, so it's been really good, and then it's kind of set it up. Um, I think it's got a bit more political, I think, than it was in the first season. A lot of it, some of it kind of goes a bit over my head, because um, I'm not from America, so maybe like yourself, Molly, you might maybe understand it a bit more, but some of it, kind of the political stuff that's kind of going on, I must admit, I find it a bit confusing, but... Um, it's been absolutely fantastic, and 
and also it also apparently teases at the end that orange it, orange is the new black is coming back on the second of June, which is also good news as well. Yeah. Can't wait for that. So. Yeah, me too. It's going to be good. Um, so yeah, that's probably the main thing I've been watching the weekend. But obviously with the Olympics being on, most stuff's kind of been on a break. So it's been a good chance for me to kind of catch up. I think I watch far too much TV. <laughs> um, so I've had quite a lot of stuff to kind of catch up on. Uh, so like I caught up on, I know it's kind of been discussed the past few weeks. So I won't do on it that much. But Arrow, uh, catching up on Arrow, which has been really good. But you kind of said, I think it was, was it yourself, Molly, last week? Said that it, out of that and Shield, it's kind of doing the comic book kind of adaptation thing a lot better. Yeah, yeah, it definitely and I, is. I like, yeah, definitely. And I think the way it's kind of bringing in kind of the characters from the comics, but kind of giving them a new twist in that, I think it's been it's been really good. Uh, really enjoying that and Pretty Little Liars as well. <laughs> Probably far too old to be watching that. Hey, but, um, I'm older than you, Liam, and I'm watching it. <laughs> oh, but you're a girl, so you're probably allowed to watch it. Well, well, Pretty Little Liars is a funny one, actually, because I read the books first. I can't remember if I, I knew that ABC, um, ABC Family were making it whilst I was reading the books, or I was just reading them off off the cuff. But um, it, it diverts quite away from the books. And I, I'm a little bit behind on it, actually, but um, I do love it. I do love it. I know. I know I love it. It's one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> it's been really good. This week they did a, like a noir episode. It was okay. all like in black. Um, I don't know how far behind you are, but one of the characters is, is on pills and stuff like that. So she kind of has this kind of, the whole episode's in black and white and everyone's kind of dressed up in 40s stuff and they're all kind of doing that, like Hannah's works on the switchboard and you know, it's all that kind <laughs> of 1940s stuff. So it's quite a cool episode. I don't... Yeah quite a bit different that they've kind of done that so that's been quite good um and obviously there's stuff about we kind of know who or we think we kind of know who he is now and they're yeah. kind of getting closer to that and that sort of stuff yeah. so it's been it's been really good i don't i think it's got a it's already been picked up for a fifth season so a, part of me wants that to be the last one because i think they're kind of dragging you, it out a little bit yeah, yeah i think i think they are as well you kind of if you because i'm a bit out of the loop now and i know once i get back into it i'm not going to remember who knows what and who's like who's siding with who and it's so yeah. complex yeah it's um, totally and um, did you see ravenswood have been cancelled yes i had I'd, I'd started watching it and gave up because it went on a break before christmas and i hadn't watched it since it came back so i can't say i'm that disappointed no. Had you, had you been watching it? Mm, I'd kind of, no, I hadn't seen any of it, but I'd kind of been following little bits of it, you know, without trying to spoil myself too much. But obviously, I think yeah. now it's been cancelled. I, I probably won't bother, to be honest. Yeah, I, I wouldn't bother. It wasn't wasn't very good. To, yeah. I'm not surprised it didn't get picked, it didn't get renewed, to be honest. But yeah, so that's good. And also, if we're doing a little shout outs for, little, for shows that should, people should be watching, ABC Family Switched to Birth, people should be watching that. It's a fantastic. And that's me. Uh, Molly, do you want to take the next one or shall I? Yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Um, I've also been watching the Olympics a lot. Uh, in my house, everyone's watching curling. Uh, I'm also a huge hockey fan, so I've been paying attention to the hockey games that started uh, on Friday. I don't know if you guys are watching the Olympics at all, though. Mm, not a big Olympics I, fan myself. No. Yeah. <laughs> I watched the, um, oh, what was it called? It was the skiing that was kind of, they did little spins and little flips as well. <laughs> it was a th- it was the three sisters who were competing in it. I can't remember what it was called now. Um, but I saw that round because I saw, I think, one of, I think they took, um, I think they took gold and silver, actually. There was three sisters. One of them didn't make the final, but... Um, I w- that's the only thing I've watched. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I've been watching the hockey because I'm just a hockey fan in general. Um, but, yeah, again, all of my TV has pretty much been off this week because of the Olympics. So I started watching uh, the UK's version of Being Human. Have any of you guys seen that? No, I watched it when it started because I thought it was going to be a bit like Misfits and Skins, but yeah. I just wasn't <laughs> I, I didn't bother with it. it wasn't really my thing no i think i watched i think i watched the pilot episode where and then they changed the cast i think for, for series one Did they? when it popped well they changed one of the cast members i think but yeah i i, I gave it a go and it, it wasn't really my thing either <laughs> yeah i i don't really know why i started watching it. it was just one of those things that's on netflix and i've been meaning to watch it for years so i tried it out and i'm actually really enjoying it i i think i watched it because aiden turner from the hobbit movies is is in the original series um so i've been really enjoying that but other than that i haven't been watching a lot of tv uh teen wolf was new this week uh which i used to review regularly for the site and it's getting a lot better i know everyone sort of knocks it for being a teen show but 
I think it's fantastic. I must admit, Molly, your reviews have made me want to watch it, uh, and I've seen it on Netflix, and I keep meaning to like start watching it. You definitely should. Just because you seem so <laughs> like it's amazing, and it's just made me really want to try it. I mean, it's it's a teen show that's also just really good television, which I don't think you can find very often anymore, especially within, I mean, CW shows, I watch them all the time, and they're my guilty pleasures, but they aren't exactly good TV. I think Teen Wolf really bridges the gap between good TV and teen shows, and this new season has gotten insane. One of the actors, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but one of the characters took a really dark turn this season, and the actor is just totally stepping up to the plate, and it's amazing. But I think that's all I've watched this week. Just with Liam saying that uh, you've managed to, to sell him on Teen Wolf, like David mentioned last week, you managed to sell me on Helix. Yes. Uh, I started watching that this week. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I like it or not. There was a lot of things. I mean, I, I spoke about it uh, with you guys earlier on in the week. It was really, really cringy at some bits. Like, yeah. Really just awful writing. But I still quite liked it. I liked the idea of it and... Uh, I like that kind of edgy, spooky side to it as well, uh, which has kind of filled the gap that American Horror Story left. Yeah. Which I finished this week as well. Yeah, it's a good horror series. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, watch the next few episodes when I get a chance and uh, see if it if it gets better. The, the, the other thing that I pulled up during the week, the fracking. Is that a, a sci-fi, siffy thing? Because I watched The Finds when that came out. I've done the review for the first episode of that. And that was the thing that the one thing that I really hated about that fracking. I don't like it. It doesn't sound. It makes it sound as if you're trying to tone it down to like PG level when it's but try to put it across as if you were using curse words. And I don't. I don't like that. Either curse or don't. Don't don't go in between. It's just silly. Mm. Yeah. All I can say on that, I I thought it's because Helix came from the same guy that did Battlestar. And I because th- they had lots of fracking in it as well instead of saying yeah words. they did so I thought it was like that was his thing but like you say he defines it as well maybe as a, a sci-fi thing to do it rather than that but like you say it is annoying I don't know why yeah. just don't put it in if you're not gonna I don't it really it really stands out as well it's not one that you can just slip in it, because it's not a, a real word so it, it stands out and you notice it and it it just sounds really silly and childish um, but other than that if they stop with the fracking thing for the rest of the series. I think I'll be okay with it. I think I could watch it, and hopefully it gets it gets a wee bit scarier as well. Um, because that was the my one complaint from the first two episodes as well was uh, the horror bits weren't in it enough. Yeah, it gets a lot scarier, and the plot. I mean, my friends and I have been watching it, and we were complaining that it goes a little bit slow in the earlier episodes. But I think around episode four or five, it gets really good. Okay, that's that's not a problem. But I don't. I didn't really mind the. The pacing of it, I thought it was it was okay for a, a double pilot. Um, I was quite happy to sit there um, for it. It wasn't too boring, which can be a bit of a problem with some pilots. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, True Detective uh, that we spoke about before. Um, I know Robbie last week was talking about Archer. Uh, I've got back into that this week on Netflix. I still don't know how I feel about it. I really like it, but it's a background show for me. I can't sit and watch it alone. It's just I need to do something else at the same time. I don't know why, but it's uh, it's really funny and it's really nasty. Like humor, quite sarcastic and all that. So that's my new thing. Just now that's my Netflix series. Um, finished Always Sunny. I've been talking about it every week on the podcast, uh, trying to get every single person I know to watch it. Uh, fin- finally <laughs> finished it this week, and I'm really gutted now. <laughs> I want to just go back and watch it all again. So, roll in September. Or... All right, aren't there, aren't there quite a few seasons of that? So, did you just devour about ten seasons? <laughs> yep, nine seasons in four weeks. Um, showed you how sad I am. We, we can actually put a number on how sad I am. <laughs> Good going. I, I've done the same with Grey's Anatomy back when I was catching up with that as well. So, uh, a bit of a bad habit. But yeah, roll in September for that coming back for season ten. Hopefully it gets a season 11 as well. <laughs> but yeah, I'll maybe, maybe throw in a wee tribute for that, for the, the opening theme song. We'll see how what else comes up. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've been watching, really. I wanted to go and see the Lego movie when it came out, but there was no chance that I was going to the cinema in Moulin <laughs> on Valentine's Day. That's about <laughs> I can't wait to see it. It is, it is good fun. I did the review for the website and... Um, oh yeah, of course. I had a few issues with the ending, but um, but overall it, it's, the, it's that proper... You know, Pixar level of 
the adults were laughing and the kids were, you know, and the kids were just gawping at all the colourful scenery and, and just like the Lego coming to life and then, and yeah. all the adults are just laughing at all the like Will Arnett being Batman. He's just what I'm brilliant. What from it is, uh, any of you guys play the, the Lego video games? Some of them, yeah. No, no. no. I remember playing Lego Star Wars uh, a fair few years ago now and that was just so funny, even though there was no dialogue. It was, I love that that Lego style, and I, I hope that's what they've brought to the movie as well. There's a very, there's a very, very good Star Wars joke, which you, I'm sure you will enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to see her tomorrow. I'll hopefully have the review up tomorrow night, which will be yet yeah, last night uh, when this comes out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. A lot, I heard a lot of good things. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw it yesterday. Um, Oh, it, God, it's I don't it's like this it's one. It, you said it, you said it, you said it, <laughs> ruin it for me. It's, no, no, I know it's it's brilliant. It's really good, but I found it quite exhausting. All oh, right. It's, it's quite it packs a punch. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay. It's not light watching. <laughs> I, I'm sure we can talk more about it after I've seen it. Although it's very funny, actually, it is very funny. I think the subject matter lends itself to the comedy. Yeah. The guy falling in love with a with a computer. Yeah. I'm hoping it's quite funny. I get a good watch. It is. It's definitely worth a watch. I'm looking forward to your review. Um. So we had a few topics lined up. I think Kate, maybe you should go first. Just well, well, the the nominations are still, or the award winners are still seated to us. The awards um, are still going. Yeah. So at, at the time of this recording. Um, the BAFTA awards are taking place. Um, as we were just discussing a little bit before the show started, for some crazy reason, the um, the show is the show goes on. It starts about seven o'clock UK time. Probably finishes about nine ten o'clock, but it actually it's not actually broadcast on BBC One until nine o'clock. Um, so pretty much the ceremony's finished by the time uh, time it goes out. So. So the awards are actually being, probably a lot of the big awards have actually been announced and we know the winners, but apart from Liam, who might have seen a few things. <laughs> I haven't, I've only seen hair and makeup, that's the only one. I've okay, had. okay. So, so, um, so I think all of us are, are kind of in the dark, we don't know anything about anyone who's won or anything like that. So, But I just wanted to go through, kind of do a little, I mean, I know it's all going on right now, so it kind of seems a little bit, a little bit strange, but I just thought, let's just say who we think's going to win. <laughs> Um, so I thought I'd just run through some of the big awards and um, we can just kind of discuss who we think's going to win um, and who we'd like to win. And I, I, I was actually going through it and it's quite interesting actually because there's quite a few omissions. Well, not omissions, but, you know, there are certain big names that the Oscars have gone for, which, Baf- which BAFTA haven't gone for. So I thought I'd start actually with um, Best Supporting Actor. Um, so the nominations are um, Barkad Apti for Captain Phillips, Bradley Cooper for American Hustle, uh, Daniel Brühl for Rush, Matt Damon for Behind the Candelabra, and Michael Fassbender for Twelve Years a Slave. Um, now Jared Leto isn't nominated in this, which he has been for the Oscar, and he won the Golden Globe, and it's fairly certain that he's going to win the Oscar. But it's interesting that he hasn't nominated it for the BAFTA. So I actually think this is probably one of the widest open awards of the evening um so just interested who you think might take this one um just uh, i'm just going to open up the web page um, i've got my fingers crossed that this isn't going to spoil it for me i hope they've not put it up on the <laughs> web page yet uh, it is they're like, oh, loading, no, no, like, like the page uh, reloads because <laughs> oh, i loaded mine before we started recording oh, yes yeah, so right, did I. I see i've seen one of them uh i'll i'll not put my voice in for that one um <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I haven't seen Captain Phillips yet. From what I hear, the uh, the fellow that's nominated from that uh, has got a very strong shout, and I remember that from mm. when the film came out here. Apparently, he's just superb in, uh, in what he does. He's the the leader of the pirates. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, he's the he's the leader of the Somali pirate. So that would be that would be my guess for it. Yeah, I can't decide whether between him or because uh, Daniel Brühl got is it Brühl is that he's he's second. I think yeah, he got think... quite a lot of quite a lot of people were talking about him and Rush. I think that he was really good, but yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised if it was Bradley Cooper. But yeah, no, I think it's going to be uh, Barkhead uh, Abdi from Captain Phillips as well. I hope it's not Michael Fassbender, just because I don't think I like him. <laughs> I think it should be the guy. I think it'll probably be the guy from Captain. Phillips. No, that, that's worse uh-huh. than my the my hatred for Benedict Cumberbatch. Not like Michael <laughs> Fassbender. everybody likes Michael Fassbender. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have you, Liam? Have you seen Twelve Years a Slave? No, I haven't seen Tales. No. He's he's he is very good in that. He is he's 
a horrible, horrible person, <laughs> but complex and uh, not likable. But he he's got layers, <laughs> okay. he, and he, it's a really interesting performance. So he's playing Shrek. No. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it's between Barkadapti. I think it's between Barkadapti and uh, Michael Fassbender, actually. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Just purely because, well, well, Michael, Michael Fassbender's Irish, isn't he? And, and you haven't really got a British guy in there. But I think, I think it's between those two, um, personally. But I'm sure it's already been decided now. But we'll move <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, supporting actress is uh, between Jennifer Lawrence for American Hustle. Julia Roberts for August Osage County, uh, Lupita Nyong'o for 12 Years a Slave, Oprah Winfrey for The Butler, and Sally Hawkins for Blue Jasmine. Now, I th- I've got an inkling here. I'm wondering if Sally Hawkins might take this, just because she's British, and it's the British Awards Ceremony. I yeah, know the BAFTAs like doing that, don't they? Yeah, I'm just... Because I think, I think Lupita Nyong'o will win the Oscar... And I think she, you know, she, she, she probably, she, you know, there's a good chance she'll take the BAFTA. But I think if, if Sally Hawkins is going to win anything, it's going to be the BAFTA. So, I think she might sneak in there, but we'll see. Do you think we'll do a double with uh, with Blue Jasmine? I think she's the best actress. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I think with best actress, it's. I was kind of going to scoot over that one because it's obvious, <laughs> obviously going to be Kate Blanchett. I don't think that's, you know, I think everyone else is just going to turn up and smile for that one. But she's, she's got that in the bag, I think. Um, but actually, well, we can move on from that and talk a little bit about Best Actor because um, that's another interesting one because um, Matthew McConaughey won the Golden Globe for Dallas Buyers Club and he, and he's been winning everything in the awards season so far. Um, and he's favourite, I think, to win the Oscar. But he's not been nominated for a BAFTA. So in the actor category, we've got Bruce Dern for Nebraska, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor for 12 Years a Slave, Christian Bale for American Hustle, Tom Hanks for Captain Phillips, and Leonardo DiCaprio for The Wolf of Wall Street. Out of the, out of the ones that I've seen, they're all very, very close. And from what I've heard from the other ones, it's, that's, that's one, going to be one of the closest categories this year, I think. Yeah, I think, again, the, I know we can't say biased and all of this, but I think Chiwetel Ejiofor has got the Britishness on, on his side. I think he might take this one. Oh, to be fair, so does Christian yeah. Bale. He's uh, Welsh, uh, air quotes. <laughs> this, that's true, that's true. But I, I, I'm not even thinking he's got a chance, to be completely honest with you. I think it's his closest contender is probably going to be Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. I would have yeah. said Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. My vote would be for DiCaprio. But, like you say, with the Britishness, yeah, he's probably got a wee edge on him. I think, I think if... Um, Edgy of Four wins this. I think it'll be a really interesting going into the Oscars. I think it'll be an interesting race between him and Matthew McConaughey to see who who takes the Oscar. I am still shocked still that Tom Hanks was snubbed for an Oscar for Captain Phillips. I just think that was that's so crazy that they put Christian Bale in there and they left Tom Hanks out. So yeah, it's pretty hard. I'd love to, I'd love to. Yeah, I don't think he's going to win this, but um, at least he was nominated. So. You know, that was the right thing, BAFTA. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm quite glad that uh, Bruce Dern got a, a lot of nomination as well, because he's he's really great. In Nebraska. Yeah. That was uh, one of he my is, surprises yeah. for this year. Yeah, and I, I know a few people have said, you know, sometimes I think people say with the Oscars, they kind of give awards to people who, you know, it's their time. Um, so I think there's a few people maybe saying that Bruce Dern might take it, but... Um, I still think it's going to be between Matthew McConaughey and Chiwetel Ejiofor, um, but it, it, it's nice to see him recognised. It, it's a it's a very good performance in Nebraska. Yeah, what other ones? Are, what are the other big ones? Um, we could talk about director um, Steve McQueen for Twelve Years a Slave, David O. Russell for American Hustle, Paul Greengrass for Captain Phillips, Alfonso Cuarón for Gravity, and Martin Scorsese for The Wolf of Wall Street. I think uh, Steve McQueen surely got that, that wrapped up. He's been winning everything else, has he not? But I haven't seen it, so I don't no, know. No, I think Alfonso Cuarón won for the Golden Globe for that. No, did he? Yeah, yeah he, he did. I, yeah, I think uh, Cuarón's got the, the lead, a pretty heavy lead on it. Um, yeah, me too. Just yeah. the way the way that gravity was done is just crazy, mm-hmm. mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, I think just because it was a labour of love and he'd worked on it for so long, and what he managed to achieve, and you ask yourself, can would would another would another director have been able to achieve that? And I think I think it's I think it's his award. Yeah, 
Although no, Steve that's McQueen is really British. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. And Paul Greengrass as well, of course. He didn't get an Oscar nomination, so um and I think I th- I thought he, he did a great job at, of Captain Phillips. I, I think that that's the best chance that American Hustle has as well. Um because that was for all the flaws that it had, it was a really well directed film. And David O'Russell made it as good as it was. Like, he made the good bits good. Just the way that everything shot, it's the best bits about it. And when you look at the cast that he had and how he used them, it was it was done really well. I don't think he'll win it, but I think that's the best chance they've got. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling they're going to come away empty-handed, actually, American Hustle. Yeah, probably, just with the, the level of With the big awards, yeah. yeah. I think, um, and I'm sure they'll they'll do well with um, costume design and production design and, and makeup and hair and things like that. But I think um, out of the big categories, I think they're going to be um, shut out. Yeah. And I just wanted to talk about um, outstanding British film, actually, because it's a bit of an interesting category because um, you've got gravity in there, which is a bit of an odd one because you tend to think. British, you know, this is a chance to celebrate the homegrown British films. Yeah. And I know there was a lot of um, disappointment that Filth wasn't nominated. Um, that seemed like a bit of a shoe in But um, then you've got films like Gravity and Rush in there, um, which obviously have got that they've been nominated mainly because the production team yeah. are British and um, it was um, a lot of the post production and the but... editing and that kind of work was done. In, in British studios but it, it does seem a little bit like you know you kind of wish that they would ignore that for a moment and just take into account some of the more British indie films as it were but I think Philomena's got this one because it's been Philomena's also nominated for best film but I can see it I, I can't see it winning best film but I think this will be where it gets its award I think um, I think it'll win British film yeah I think that's a fair show mm. yeah. I've still not seen it yet I don't, um, oh, it, it, it's really good. It Maybe an episode one, and um, yeah, I've, it's just one of those ones that slipped past me uh, when it was out, and uh, didn't really get the publicity to make me go and want to see it. Yeah, it is a bit of you know nuns and things like that. Yeah. It's not it's not the greatest sell to maybe a younger audience. But uh, it's definitely it's definitely worth watching. It's very funny, and and Steve Coogan and Judy Dench. Are, a great little little pair together, but I, I'd really like to see the Selfish Giant win. I think that's a proper proper British film that's kind of been overlooked a little bit. Um, although in terms of the Baftas, I'm sure they're really you know the team are just happy with the nomination. But I'd love to see them win it because um, that was a bit of a um, surprise one for me last year. I didn't. It was kind of one of the, I kind of didn't mean to see it, and I ended up seeing it at the London Film Festival and was just blown away by it. And it just just the two young, the two young leads in that are phenomenal, and it really made me cry. So <laughs> I'd love to see that do well, but I think um, I think Philomena's got that one. Yeah, like you say, it's one uh, an award that I think it should be looking more at the indie scene rather than the the big name stuff, um, especially when yeah. that it's just the production team that are that are involved. It's clearly like a big Hollywood movie like uh, Rush and uh, Gravity. Um, I think they should be looking more at. Kind of homegrown. Yeah, I th- I think this is a little bit of a problem that um I have with the Spirit Awards as well in America. I d- I think they tend to overlap a little bit with the mainstream films that you know the they tend to get the same nominations as the Oscars and the Golden Globes. And I think it's it's an opportunity to to celebrate you know more lesser known films and indie films and and that's what the Independent Spirit Awards are all about. And but anyway, I'm going off topic. <laughs> So, should we just close on best film and what we all think is going to win best film? So, there's 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Gravity and Philomena. What do we think is going to win the big award? I can't see past Gravity. That, that's been the one that everyone says. Like Some people say, oh yeah, uh, 12 Years a Slave was brilliant and really moving and all that. But every single person that's seen Gravity says, just mind-blowing, amazing. And I, th- I think that's, I think that's going to show. Mm, I'd have to go 12 years. I've, I must admit, I've not seen any of the films in the category. <laughs> shocking. But uh, I'd have to go 12 years late just because it, it feels like the type of movie that wins these type of awards, like BAFTA and Oscars. And that. It just feels like an, a film that would win that award. So I, I think it's going to be 12 years to see. But I'd like it to be, well, I'd like it to be Captain Phillips because that sounds like most film. I re- that's the film out of the five I really want to see, but... I don't think it's got a chance. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to 
uh, say Gravity. I've only actually seen American Hustle out of these, but I think Gravity is going to win. Okay, I think I'm going to go for 12 Years a Slave. Oh, split vote. <laughs> or split. Split vote. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to go online right now and see who won. <laughs> actually, it's probably... that's. that's it's the last award of the night, isn't it? It's probably probably not quite been decided that one yet. Yeah. Eh, give it twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on to our next topic. Um, I thought the one that would lend best a segue that I haven't managed to make uh, would have been Molly's topic, <laughs> the transatlantic TV conversions. It's like the most complicated way to put it, but uh, this week I wrote a feature for the site, uh, Britain's best or six best TV exports from the view of an American. Um, so I think a lot of people took some issues with things that I put on the list. Just for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's uh, The Fades, which was a very short-lived supernatural drama a couple of years ago, uh, Misfits, Skins, Sherlock, Doctor Who, and My Mad Fat Diary, which uh, comes, it premieres on the 17th. Okay, so My Mad Fat Diary would have premiered yesterday when this airs. Um, yeah, so it got me to thinking of the a lot of TV shows that were, you know, created in Britain or the UK um, have their own US versions, like The Office, a um, couple others. Oh, Being Human, which I mentioned earlier, also has a US version. Uh, Skins tried to have a US version, but that failed horribly. And yeah. I was, yeah, I don't, did any of you guys try to watch that? Because I got about 10 minutes into it, and I turned it off and started watching the original Skins. Believe it or not, I watched the whole first episode. In fact, I think wow. I watched, when was it cancelled? Was it like four episodes in? I, I think I, I watched all the episodes. Yeah, it was cancelled very early on. I, don't, I can't remember. I honestly did not watch anything other than the first 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. I don't know why I watched uh, as much as I did. Yeah, they had a lot of legal issues in the U.S. because they tried to throw a launch party, but all of the cast members were under 18, and the drinking age here is 21 for anyone who doesn't know. So they got into a lot of trouble because all of their cast was, like, way under the drinking age for at this party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a pretty... I think that pretty much indicated how awful it was. Also, I don't know how many of you guys knew this, but um, they were also going to try and adapt... The Misfits for the US? Well, right. see, Misfits was kind of like a spin off of Heroes, wasn't it? Not a spin off, but like a. That's clearly where they took the, the inspiration from, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was very similar. So, do you not think trying to move that over to America <laughs> would be too much like Heroes? I mean, I. Given all of the comic book TV shows that we have out here now, I wouldn't have put it past them. But this was a couple years ago. It was also the guy who did Gossip Girl who was trying to do it. So I don't think that would have been a fantastic fit. Oh, that sounds horrendous. (laughs) Yeah. This guy also did uh, Cult on the CW, which was cancelled before... It reached like the all the episodes. They pulled it before they aired all the episodes. Uh, he did the Carrie Diaries and Heart of Dixie, which they're also on the edge of being cancelled, I believe. So I think I'm glad that Misfits wasn't brought to the U.S. I think it would have been way too close to uh, Heroes. Yeah, and I think as well, like with Misfits, with it being kind of the, the young offenders and like you kind of mentioned your feature Molly about like all the the dead bodies that kind of pile up. I don't know how well that translates to American TV. I don't. I don't know if I, maybe it's just me, but I just don't quite see it working as an American. I think that's maybe why Skins didn't work, I don't know. But no. It feels like it wouldn't be something that would work. I agree. I think, um, I mean, this might be a sweeping generalization, but I think that British TV tends to be a little bit darker, especially the teen dramas, tend to be a lot darker than teen dramas in the U.S. Like, they more readily go into sex, drugs, and death than dramas in the u.s which are more i mean they're more like the carrie diaries or the vampire diaries everybody's writing in diaries (laughs) (laughs) but uh to move on a little bit i don't know if any of you guys watch elementary and sherlock uh but that's a huge debate in the u.s whether which one's the better adaption of sherlock holmes i'm a huge elementary fan i love it it's the only procedural that I watch these days. Yeah, same. And I, 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 I prefer it to Sherlock, obviously with the Cumberbatch hate, but more because <laughs> it's, it's so different. Uh, it's, they, they took a lot of risk with it. Uh, obviously having uh, Lucy Liu playing Dr. Watson and mm-hmm. um, having Sherlock portrayed as a recovering drug addict and pretty, pretty crazy, kind of manic. 
sort of thing. I think that's a bit a bit different from what you see elsewhere. Yeah, I'm more of a fan of Elementary than Sherlock. I actually just recently watched Sherlock because so many of my friends were telling me it was better than Elementary, so I decided to check it out and see for myself. And I like Sherlock. I'm not, you know, I don't hate Benedict Cumberbatch as much as you, but uh, I wasn't a huge fan of him. And I think just staying sort of neutral on it, it made me enjoy it, but I don't think that you can really compare Elementary and Sherlock. I think they're two entirely different series that were pulled from the same source material, but, I mean, they did entirely two different things with it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, does anyone, anyone want to fight the side for, for Sherlock? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will, I will stick up for Sherlock. I, I, really, I really, really enjoy Sherlock. And actually, it, it's quite funny having this um, conversation, really, because I don't really watch a lot of British TV. I, I kind of... I, I prefer the comedy. I like the British sense of humour, so I, I, I watch more probably... Although I watch a lot of American comedy as well, but if it's a BBC drama, I tend not to be interested at all. Um, it's, it's you know, production values and all of that, not as great as the US. <laughs> um, it just doesn't, doesn't really um, appeal to me at all. And actually, the first series of Sherlock came and went, and I just wasn't interested in it, but um, a friend kind of forced us to watch it on DVD and I, I, I really, I really loved it and, um, and I, I'm not a huge fan of Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, in terms of like, I won't go as far as, say, as to say I love him, but, um, I think he's very good and Martin Freeman's brilliant as well. Uh, has the, has the latest season gone out in America, Molly? Yeah, uh, I, I think so. I think it finished up. I know it was a couple weeks behind, uh, in the UK, but I think, yeah, it finished up. Yeah. Um, I actually, in regards to Sherlock, I have to say that their version of Moriarty, played by Andrew Scott, is so much... I, I mean, I love Natalie Dormer, who plays the gender-swapped version on Elementary, but I think Andrew Scott's portrayal is amazing, and I think I think Sherlock has it in the bag with that one. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't argue either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love Natalie Dormer as well, but I, I don't know, she just didn't seem... She's she's too cutesy for it, I think. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't seem like she should be Moriarty. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's not got that evilness. <laughs> <laughs> I just I was kind of intrigued to see what the Americans thought actually of them because I don't think the later series has gone down as well in the UK as the previous series. I think it's been a lot more with you know without spoiling too much. You know, like um, Watson got married and there's some new characters brought into it, and it's been more of a focus on the personal relationships rather than you know a crime to solve every week and i think people have had a bit of a problem with that a bit of a problem with the structure and the way it's gone but I, i've really enjoyed it just purely because i love the characters and i love the portrayal of the characters but um no i was just gonna say i heard the same thing and a lot of people were complaining that it was sort of fan service like the writers uh stephen moffat or moffat and mark gattis or i can't say their names um but they were saying that the writers really sort of played on what the fans wanted, which was more character relationships rather than the crimes. And I, I saw a lot of people complaining about that, but I also enjoyed it, so I'm not complaining. Um, the, the one that I wanted to bring up for, well, not necessarily wanted to bring up, but um, the, the only one that I could think for the kind of UK to US conversion, Top Gear. I, I know a lot of Americans really loved the British version of it with uh, Jeremy Clarkson, Rich Hammond and... Uh, James May, but I, I watched. Well, I used to watch the American version. It was it was an interesting enough show, and it just it couldn't live up to the same standard. I'm afraid, and I think that's the same for most things. The Office is the, the only one that's that I can think of the top of my head that's been really successful. I would, yeah, I would say The Office and probably Being Human, because in the U.S. I believe it's still airing. But other than that, I can't think of anything else. Um, House of Cards. Is the obvious yeah. one as well. Ah, British yeah, show made that. into a oh, US yeah. show. Obviously very different because I think it was a mini series in um in Britain. Um and obviously they've expanded it out and made it more glossy and, and really um exa- um not exaggerated, extended the storyline. Um but that that's obviously done really, really well. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to mention obviously the fact that Fox are remaking Broadchurch which um, went out oh. in the UK. I think it was about a year ago. I think it was this time last year, uh, maybe, maybe March that. last year. That's the David Tennant one, yeah? Yeah, did anyone watch Broadchurch? Yeah, I watched it. I think they showed the UK one in the US as well. They did. If I'm correct, yeah. Yeah, and David Tennant is um, playing the same role 
as he did in the UK one and the US one. What? Which I just find really bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just like, so is he going to play it exactly the same as he did the UK one? Do you think they'll just Photoshop him into it? <laughs> well, pr- presumably, obviously, it's it's going to be slightly different in terms of set in America and... Um, you know, they might slightly change the characters a little bit, but I think the basic premise is the same, which is a young boy yeah. is found dead on the beach, and it's like a small town m- murder mystery. Yeah, um, I think I heard the end. Sorry, I think no. the ending's going to be different. I don't think it's going to okay. be the same. Part. I don't know. I think I've heard read somewhere that they're maybe going to change who did it because everyone obviously is like, "What's the point?" Yeah, I was, was going to say, wouldn't it be cool if instead of being washed up on some British beach? Just washed up in the Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all, all the fake tan. <laughs> Just have him covered in fake tan. And piercings and tank top. That sounds horrible. That would be awesome. I would watch that. That would be hilarious. Well, actually, Stu, I think I have the same level of, of hatred for David Tennant that you have for Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, really? Uh, ah, I, I, I cannot... David no, I think... he's a, David Tennant, he's a funny one, because um, obviously he did Doctor Who and... Again, I don't. I don't have any interest in Doctor Who. It's a British TV show. Don't care. <laughs> um, but um, since then, he's just done some terrible film roles. He does all these horrible Virgin Media ads that you get in yeah. the, in the UK, and and I, I think he looked out a bit with Broadchurch. I think he was well, not the worst thing in it, but he was, you know, next to Olivia Coleman, who's just amazing in everything that she does. Yeah. Um, I, I just. Yeah, I just, I just think it's bizarre that he's playing exactly the same character, and it's just anyway. I'll uh, I'll tell you a show. I'll tell you a show to go or a mini series to go back and watch uh, that will change your mind on David Tennant. It's called Casanova. Okay. Over. <laughs> okay. Um, it was a BBC Three series, and that was when I. Oh, BBC. <laughs> no, honestly, it's so good. It's just really, <laughs> really silly, and uh, it's it's got a perfect blend of comedy and drama. It's honestly so good. Okay. Um, I think I think you'll really like that. Go back and watch that. That was his big break for me. That was when I first noticed him. Okay. Uh, okay, you ruined my segue, kind of. But uh, <laughs> moving on to Liam's topic, uh, The Walking Dead, fusing uh, Britishness and Ameri- Americanness oh, yeah. into the one with, obviously, you've got Andrew Lincoln, uh, David Morrissey. Liam, you wanted to talk about The Walking Dead coming back, didn't you? Yeah, well, it was just mainly kind of because I know, obviously, you guys, or some of us, have been talking about in the kind of on the website team have been talking about how much we don't like you don't like it and kind of like Stu I know you said you haven't watched this and you're not going to watch it after the mid-season finale and and I know I've, I've read a lot of reviews like on some websites and that as well kind of saying that it's getting a bit tedious and everything now but obviously the ratings certainly in America because I don't know what they're like um, over here in the UK uh, but in America I know they're the ratings are going through the roof, and every kind of time, it, the ratings just seem to be going on the up and up. So people seem to be tuning in, but the critics don't seem to be liking it. And I just thought, get your ideas, see what you kind of thought about The Walking Dead, how you feel it's going, and, and what you kind of think about why people are watching it when the critics are saying that it's not worth watching. So this was purely to debate me, then? Well, no, well, not I necessarily. Like <laughs> no, I, Stu, I hate it as well. Oh, okay. good. I might have a lot to say. I'll, I'll let you Well, guys. I might be the only one that likes it, then. No, I like it. <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Well, I'll say first since this is my topic. I. I mean, I like it. I think it's. I think because I think Kate, you once tweeted saying that it's it's trying to be like Game of Thrones. We don't care about kind of the characters or something. And I don't think it's trying to be like that. I, and if it is, it's failing big time because, like you say, I don't. You. Don't, I don't care about any of the characters. To be yeah, perfectly honest. Yeah. When you know certain people got killed off in the, in the mid-season finale, and that it's not like you were that bothered. I, but I still find myself liking it. And I think it's more the sense of the way of people are dying. <laughs> it's, just, it's more about me than anything else. I <laughs> but I quite like like the gruesome ways and obviously the kind of set pieces with the zombies and stuff like that. And I do, but I I still enjoy it. I didn't quite like the return this or last week. Yeah, well, last week now. Um, kind of mostly focusing on Carl because I think that the actor that plays him, no offense to the guy, he's not the strongest of actors. I don't think he's good enough to kind of carry all episode. I would have. I much preferred the. Oh, I've totally forgotten it. What's the name? The women's name? Michonne. Totally forgotten her name there. Like, mm-hmm. I thought her bit kind of flashbacky bits were quite good. And I was more, I wish it was an episode of that, to be honest, because I really like her. Um, but yeah, I think it's good. It's not, it's not amazing. And, um, you know, it's not up there with Game of Thrones or stuff, amazing TV like that. But I, it's good for kind of watching for a bit of horror, because I don't really think there's much, personally, I don't really think there's much else kind of horror on TV. So I, 
I, I still like this. I think I, I have a feeling I'm in a minority more than anything else. Well, I personally enjoy it, but I think I enjoy it for all the opposite reasons that you do. I do love the characters. I love uh, Glenn and his girlfriend, whose name I'm totally forgetting. Maggie. Maggie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I love um, Norman Reedus's character, Daryl. And he, I think he's a huge fan, like a huge fan favorite, at least in the U.S. Um, and he's on the run with Beth, which I also did not like last week's episode because I don't like Rick or Carl. Um, and I love Michonne's bits, but I'm looking forward to this week's episode because they're going to be exploring more characters. I think yeah. I hope that they don't do this every episode where they pick like one or two groups of characters and only focus on them because I think it'll get a very tedious. And I think that would have people tune out. Um, but I think the reason that it has like such good ratings in the U.S. is because it's I don't. I honestly don't know. But then I also don't understand the ratings in the U.S. anyway. NCIS is always very high up in the ratings every week, and that show is just absolutely boring. Um, I think it mostly has to do with like the people that have the ratings boxes are. They generally tend to be older people because younger generations are watching their TV more online. So I think it really only indicates what the older generations are watching. But I mean, I don't know. I might be wrong. Can you just imagine? Uh, uh... 60-year-old couple sitting watching The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just, I'll kind of say my piece, because I think um, when um, when it first started, I think I think we can probably all agree that the first episode was amazing. It was, you know, oh, yeah. really fresh and different and intriguing and just something new on television. And, and it was, you know, it really hooked, really hooked me anyway. And, and I think to be you know the, the the first series in general was 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 really good television i think it started going wrong in the second series when they just were stuck at the farm for pretty much the whole series and it it got a bit bogged down by that um picked up again a bit in the third series when we introduced the governor i just thought he was a really good character but again it had a really disappointing finale and too much filler and when it came back for the fourth series i watched the first episode and they introduced so many characters and I just I just just found myself just on my phone all the way through it. I just wasn't really watching it, it wasn't hooking me at all. And then you kind of get to the stage where you hate watching something. So we kind of <laughs> hate watched it for about four episodes. And I think the last episode that I watched was the one where um where Rick kind of abandons Carol by the side of the road and just um tells her not to come back, you know, after she's killed those those people. Yeah. Um which I was really happy about because I hate Carol. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, just thinking about it, I pretty much hate all the characters and I think that's the biggest problem for me. Well, I think there are two big problems. The main one being what you need with this kind of show, you know, post-apocalyptic world, zombies. You need the group. and It works best when they're on the run, when they're moving, when they're moving forward. And I think, I wish they had like, um, I wish they had, a goal to aim for i wish they had the place they needed to be or i wish they needed to find you know there was a person they needed to find or you know they were heading for a boat or something but they their main aim and maybe this is what you would do in that situation their main aim is to settle and to try and build a new life and just survive and i think that's the problem you know they get to the farm and they get to the prison and they just it's so static and i think when you have that kind of situation you need compelling characters and i just i just hate all of the characters pretty much. I, I like michonne she's she's good and obviously the governor was really good as well but the, i mean the only reason i would ever go back to watching the walking dead is, is when when they kill carl off i will be there <laughs> i will be watching it and, I'll, and when that zombie like oh i just want i just want a zombie to kill him and then to like put on that stupid hat that he wears i hate that hat so much i just hate carl <laughs> <laughs> but um it's just it feels a bit like a soap opera now a soap opera within like a post-apocalyptic zombie world and it, it just and yeah like like liam you mentioned what they just kill people off and they think they're they're making high stakes television but when you don't care about the characters you just yeah. like just kill everybody off i don't yeah. care <laughs> exactly. it's like it's like when you say that you like glenn as a character well what I, I can tell you i don't know a thing about glenn apart from that he, he likes maggie and wants to marry her That's, i mean <laughs> I, I don't care then if he gets killed off because 
<laughs> why why would I care? It's just I think But I like seeing them get killed off. Well, I think the reason that I like Glenn so much is because he sort of can see into the future. Like like you were saying, Kate, I I really had a hard time when they at the end of I think it was the first season when they got to the CDC and the CDC guy was pretty much like the world is entirely messed up mm. and there's no saving it. Like, you all just, like, there's nothing you can do. You're all stuck with this for the rest of your lives, for the rest of forever. And I had a, mm. like, I didn't like that. And you're, I mean, now that you say it, yeah, I don't like the staticness of it, but I do care about the characters enough that I want to see them, I want to see them survive to a point where, I mean, zombies can't overrun the world forever, can they? I just, I feel like they don't play <laughs> with the future enough. You know, all you said that, first season was great the first season was great it was one of the best seasons of television uh in my opinion ever made like single single season and like you said it just it died a death in season two um this this is my rant by the way i'm, I'm just gonna go, <laughs> go all into it the problem with the show it's not that i hate the characters the characters are all backup characters they're all supporting cast uh even rick he went from being the the main attraction um, this cool cowboy guy looking after his family and all that, try try to get back to his family, and now he's just nothing. Uh, some random guy with mental health issues. It's it's not fun. Um, it's not cool. The the new ca- uh, cast that they introduced, they're not interesting. Tyrese, is it Tyrese, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Apparently in the comic books, he is or the graphic novels, whatever. Um, he's just a total badass and runs the show, and he's done nothing since they brought him in. Uh, I was really looking forward to having him coming in along with the Governor and Michonne and they just totally ruined it. Governor was great. David Morrissey absolutely made the show for me in Season 3. He was the the one shining light from Season 3. Made it good. And, spoiler alert, get killed off mid-season finale there. Uh, if you've not watched it by now, it's your own fault. You should have watched it. Um, <laughs> but he was he was the one, the one bit about the show that was still great. Uh, it was such a, a, a brilliant, evil character that you could relate with and they, they got rid of that. Herschel was the other one. Don't know why. Uh, again, spoilers. Killed him off. Well, I, I don't know why they done that. Of the of the prison camp, he was the, the one guy you could relate to that you actually felt something for. Um, and now, now they're just left with a, a load of, I say, supporting, supporting characters. I heard they killed the baby off as well. Oh god, so they did it. I totally forgot about that. I mean... <laughs> just shows you how irrelevant it was. They went there. <laughs> but, well, yeah, like you say, Liam, it appears like they're, they're trying to be like Game of Thrones and, uh, oh yeah, we don't care if we kill off characters. It's It depends what characters you kill off. Game of Thrones does it well because you actually want the characters to survive. You don't, you don't care about the, the Walking Dead guys. They're, they're all just a bit useless, aren't they? And I'm, I'm quite pleased because I've held true to my New Year's resolution and I have not watched, not caved in and watched the the second part of this season, uh, and I've got no desire to. I don't think I'll. I don't think I'll be breaking it anytime soon. Not unless something spectacular happens. It was always something done well was the big set pieces, but I'm not going to watch every week just for the occasional big set piece. And uh, that's me done. <laughs> <laughs> you can come out now. <laughs> I think that's what they do, though. They have they have the big set piece episodes, but in between, it's just so dull and. Okay. And they just, and it goes on for like, you know, I don't know how, it's not as long, I don't think it's like the 20, it's not 24 episodes a season, is it? But it's, you know, it's around the 15, 16 episode mark, I think. And to have two or three good episodes, or good in inverted, you know, big budget episodes where things happen and, you know, plot moves along and things like that, it's it's not. It's it's not worth it. Yeah. So. I think it would help do it well to do like a Game of Thrones and do like a ten episode season, because then at least it would mm. maybe cut out a bit of the filler, because they've obviously got a fit more in. But yeah, I think the kind of fifteen episodes, whatever, however long it's on for, like you say, they do need to fill it with a lot of guff. And it just. I think you hit the nail on the head, Kate, when you when you said, uh, without them having a goal, it's not. Yeah. That's what uh, draws the interest out of it, is having uh, having something through. I mean, it's not. In season four, the best episodes were the ones where we were following the governor, when he had a goal, to set something to, to aim for. Um, those were the best episodes by a mile, since probably season one, maybe season two. I don't, I don't know whether, cause they've had so many showrunners as well, haven't they? And they've had so many upheavals in the writing and the in the production the, um, team. I don't know if that's helped. Never should get rid of him. He was, he was doing good work with him, and it was... Mm. Uh, creative differences. Basically, he didn't want to make as much money as the 
the producers did apparently mm. uh, and they sacked him and I think that was their biggest mistake because it, most of the cast members came on because of him but they wanted to work with him I think you can tell when he left that it all went downhill anyway sorry for dragging that down a little bit on to a lighter <laughs> note <laughs> yeah uh, okay so my topic is I'm really worried this is going to be so boring now um, I produced the, the new feature this week uh, best of the web so I thought it'd be nice to tie in that with a topic about web series and how they are on the up and I, I think that they are going to be up there with TV and movies as the third form of media in a couple of years time you, you look at you can look at YouTube and you'll see all these videos with millions of subscribers I mean what, what's uh, that PewDiePie fellow on now is it 40 million subscribers or something like that that's more people than can watch TV in Britain it's more people than there are in Britain so I, I think that uh, YouTube series and vlogs and all that can be a legitimate form of media. I think it's something as well that with what we do, um, doing the, the online blog, magazine, whatever you want to call it, I think we are we are so closely linked with that sort of thing. Um, I mean, all you look at any any of our rival channels, they're all doing podcasts. Of course, ours are the best. <laughs> podcasts and video series and uh, different content like that they've all got their own YouTube channel so it's I think it's something that's because it's so linked with us I think it should be regardless higher than what it is yeah. Do any of you guys watch uh, kind of web series or anything like that I know Molly last week you mentioned oh I've totally forgot the name of it now um, <laughs> it's the Lizzie Bennet Diaries Lizzie Bennet um, Diaries that's the one yeah yeah, it's that one actually. More diaries. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, that one actually finished up last spring, I think, and they started a new one called Emma Approved, based on Jane Austen's Emma. And in regards to it being kind of similar to regular television, it it's a web series, but it took a winter hiatus this year for like two months, and I it's was the, the cast getting too big for the boots. I mean, I don't know. They're all like relatively <laughs> unknowns, but like I was. I mean, they took a, a brief, I think it was probably for the holidays, but it just sort of, it just sort of made me realize how close to TV it's really getting. It was kind of insane. Yeah, I mean, I watch a lot more uh, web series now in the last maybe nine months or so uh, than I do t- uh, television. I, I don't watch my TV anymore. I just watch uh, YouTube channels and I'm, I'm going to count like Netflix series and with that as well, like Netflix original series. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they are, in effect, web series. You can't get them on your TV or cable. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that, that kind of links in as well. I know, Liam, you said you were going to watch the the new Amazon pilots. Yeah, yeah. I've watched a few of them. I, I mean, how, how do they compare, firstly, to the Netflix original? Um, I don't know, really. Uh, I don't... I mean, they're all right. I mean, they're good enough. I think... Um, I, I quite like the way that Amazon are doing it, that, you know, they, they put the pilots on and then get people to vote. Yeah. For which one they like, and then that one gets into a series. I think it then there's a problem with that is if you like the first episode and you want to watch the next one, then that might not get picked up because it doesn't get enough votes, or it could be in six months' time or however long it takes for them to make it, and by that time you've lost interest or forgot about it, and you don't end up watching it. So I think in some ways it's it's got a couple of issues, but it's an interesting idea that they're doing, and and some of them, I mean, they've got quite big. The ones I've watched have got quite big people in it. The, I've only watched the three comedies, I've watched the dramas, but one of them's got um, Natalie Zia, is it? Who was in The Following and yeah, and stuff. Yeah, not know she's been in. Justified, that's what she's in. Yes, yes, she was in Justified, yes. So she's she's in one of them. Um, another one's got, um, I think it's Jeffrey Tambor, who I couldn't tell you what he's yeah, been in, but he's uh, one of those people that kind of... Yes, yes, that was where I started from. Um, so he's like a guy that kind of pops a lot of stuff. And then the other one's got Saffron Burroughs, who's an English actress. She's been in a couple of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes and she's been in other stuff as well. So, I mean, they're getting quite big, relatively quite well-known people. And one of the, the dramas has got Titus Welliver, who was in Lost and The Good Wife and things like that. He's been a few things. So they're kind of getting quite good people into them. So I think that's quite good. Um, but yeah, just I mean they're just as good as other TV shows to be honest. I think I prefer the Netflix stuff. Yeah. But again, I think it, it, it hurts it that you can only watch one episode and then you've got to wait to see whether everyone else likes the same show as you and whether that gets picked up. So. Do you think it's a good thing that Amazon are trying to get into this market? That this like try to compete with Netflix and produce their own their own content. It, I mean, it could be. I mean, it can't hurt them certainly. I think it's just you can see you get to the point where everyone's going to be doing it. You just think you know. Yeah. 
only so much that we can all that everyone can only watch really. Um, but I mean, fair play to them if they want to to give it a bash and they can get you know good actors and good writers and stuff on it. And again, I think it's maybe similar to Netflix that they can. I mean, I suppose American cable shows like HBO and that they don't they can kind of do more kind of edgy stuff than kind of the broadcast stuff like ABC and that. Um, I think again, it's kind of another place where people can go if they want to make those kind of shows. You know, with the nudity and all that, then they can do that. And I think, I, I don't think it can hurt them. I don't, I mean, I don't know whether it's ever going to get, take on as much as Netflix has, but I suppose. I swear a few years ago, if you'd said about Netflix, everyone would been like, that'll never catch on. And now look at us a few years later, everyone yeah, watches it, so. I, I had a question about the Amazon pilots, actually, because I remember last year them doing this, and then they, they took two to series, didn't they? I think. Yeah, I think they did, yeah. Did, that, did those series ever actually happen? Because it just seems like, now we're back at pilot season. It's like I don't remember any coverage of the series whatsoever. I think one of them did because one of them was about like um, a congressman like sharing a flat together, or living in a house together, and had like John Goodman in it. I know that one got picked up to series, but mm. it's kind of like I say, you know, it, you know, we were all talking about it, or people were talking about it a year ago, and then everyone's forgotten about it when it actually got released because it takes them so long to, yeah. to put it to series. So um, yeah, I don't think there was much fanfare, but I know certainly that one has. It did get made into a proper seas, but I couldn't even tell you what the other one was, whether that happens or not. So it might well happen again. Was it not one of the ones that David absolutely tore to shreds in our kind of mini preview of them? I, I think it was one that he just didn't score. He just said it was too bad to score it or something like that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even remember what it was about. I do think they've got some way to go to catch up with Netflix, though, because I think you could, I think we could all probably name about four or five original Netflix series, but Amazon, I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> Uh, so what about taking Netflix and comparing it to, let's say, HBO or AMC? Do you think they'll ever be competing with them? Like, just with their uh, original series? I mean, the House of Cards, I believe, was nominated for a bunch of Golden Globes this year, so I think they already are. Yeah, yeah I'd agree. Yeah. Plus, they've done this big deal with, is it Marvel? Yeah. They're doing, like, four Marvel mm. shows, and then they're all going to come together and do, like, an avengers type thing with them. So, I mean, that's right. a pretty big deal for them to get all that kind of Yeah, thing. I know they were in the run to, uh, to show Better Call Saul, uh, the Breaking Bad spin-off. But they're not in any discussions to, to host that themselves. I think, yeah, that's that's going to be on uh, UK Netflix. Like the, what they did with Breaking Bad, is it? Yeah, the same, because I think Breaking Bad um, it had trouble picking up a commissioner, I think, in the UK, so Netflix took it. Yeah obviously did really well, so they're doing the same thing with um, Better Call Saul. I think that's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But, like, like I mentioned in the uh, in the feature that we just published, I think a lot of people are going to, they're, they're running um, web series like a business, like a TV station. I mean, there's, there's massive production houses that, that make millions of dollars um, and produce hours worth of content every week. Uh, I'm an absolute addict for uh, Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter. I was so chuffed to get a, uh, the article retweeted from one of the guys. Uh, that's my favourite that we've had. <laughs> but their, their content is brilliant. It's absolutely hilarious. The guys like uh, Fred W, you've probably heard of, a uh, big YouTube star. Rocket Jump, I think it is, his uh, new channel is called. It's because he's brought more people in and they're now, they're now doing regular stuff like a, like a TV station. And a lot of kind of kind of nerdy things like that. I think that's this is where that audience is leading the way. You know, you get a lot of podcast series that are ju- just an audio channel doesn't quite do it justice. You need to be to be watching it like it's a like a chat show sort of thing. And I think that's I honestly think that's the future. I think two or three years down the line, I think that's what we'll be seeing most of. So was it was there anything else? Uh, you guys want to talk about? I don't know. Well, I was maybe just going to maybe quickly, I know we'll probably want to go off on more spaffers, but maybe just quickly about the, the CW picking up. They've picked up Arrow, Vampire Diaries, Carrie Diaries, the originals, and Rain for seasons next year. Yep. Oh, nice. You, I don't I'm know if really you guys... I'm the Vampire Diaries still going strong. That's yeah. uh, one of my, my guilty pleasures. So I'm, I'm glad that's still, still picking up an audience and all that. A lot, I know a lot of our fans love it as well, so yeah, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, they've renewed um, have they given Supernatural a tenth series as well haven't they oh they had did I miss that off yeah. yeah which I just I loved Supernatural I was one of the biggest Supernatural fans and then um, 
it should have ended at series five and they continued it and they've continued it and I don't watch it anymore but um I you know it's it's I the, the fact that it went to Friday nights which is the death knoll of of television and came back from that and now it's got a tenth series is you got to admire it from afar <laughs> <laughs> yeah even though I can't I can't watch it anymore but yeah <laughs> It'll probably be the last. They'll probably do a nice round ten and, and finish it off. Yeah, I think so. Okay, just for a for a close up, and have they got any uh, wrestler impressions or hairdressers that I recommend or anything like that? I don't think anyone could do any better than Stuart's impression. Also. No, that that was yeah. outstanding. <laughs> Uh, I had to, had to throw it in uh, as a wee extra at the end as well. <laughs> okay, so although I, although I did think you should call it as it's episode four, you should call the podcast "A New Hope." Just you know what, I'll do that. Just especially for you, Liam, I, I will do that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, TBFR podcast issue number four, "A New Hope." So, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, you, remember, you can follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google Plus. Just search TV and Film Review. Uh, you can get us on YouTube if it's working yet <laughs> uh, youtube.com slash TV and film reviews with an S at the end um, catch us on iTunes if you search TVFR you're hopefully already listening on uh, iTunes but just in case you're not go and do that uh, and <laughs> you can download us at Bandcamp uh, TV and film review dot Bandcamp dot com and oh yeah uh, remember in uh, get involved with us um, we've got our, our forum that you can find I'll put a link in in the bottom uh, of the page and you can find it off our homepage as well uh, we'll be doing uh, TVFR Film Club starting from what do you think yes. Kate next week two weeks end of the month we'll uh, no where are we now mid-feb um, dead. hopefully by the end of the month we'll, uh, we'll kick something off and uh, we'll keep, keep everyone posted with that um, but if you want to get involved in the next podcast as well. So you can get us on Twitter uh, if you want to send us any questions in. If you hashtag AskTVFR. Uh, if you want to send us a message on Facebook. Or you can email me at stu at tvandfilmreview.com. Uh, and I'll, I'll put your questions on a note. And I'll actually remember them next week. Promise. So thanks to our guests on this week. Liam. Uh, if you want to give your Twitter a wee plug. And maybe get you a few more followers. Oh yeah. <laughs> My Twitter is at crisp underscore packet. Okay, and Molly? My Twitter is Molly Rocket, M O L L Y R O C K I T. And Kate. Uh, and you can follow me at underscore culture mouse. That's all one word. Underscore culture mouse, really? I think I might be following that. Yeah, wrong culture mouse is already taken. I think I might be following that person instead of you. I'll, I'll make sure that, I'm, that I change that. Really? Oh. Oh, are they interesting? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> so, thanks very much, guys, for, for being on this week. And, um,. Maybe see you next week as well if you if you fancy coming on. Yep. And uh, thanks again, yep. everyone, for listening. <laughs> bye bye. They took you, nightman, and you don't belong to them. They left me in a world of darkness without your sexy hands, and I miss you, nightman, so bad. Fights are of the night, man.